If your goal is to start selling $5,000 offers or $10,000 offers or even $30,000 offer and more, then this video is for you. Many coaches don't make the income goals they want and deserve simply because of one reason, and that is they sell very low-priced coaching services. So if you have seen coaches making 25 k a month to 100 k a month, and you wonder why and how can they generate that amount of revenue through coaching, watch until the end because I'm pretty sure that right after you watch this video, you'll start working on your high-ticket offer right away. So let's get started. If you really want to generate better revenue for your coaching business faster and even without a big following, then you need to have a high-ticket offer. But the problem is most coaches don't know how to create an offer that they can charge a premium for. And that stems from so many reasons like having a poor mindset, lack of knowledge about pricing and offer creation, and of course, the imposter syndrome which we all get to experience time and time again. So in this video, I'll break the solution into three different steps so you'll know exactly how you can create and package an offer that you can charge for at least $5,000 or more. The first step to creating a high-ticket offer is by identifying your target market's challenges, frustrations, problems, or pain points. We do this to uncover the reason as to what will really drive them to buy what you're about to offer. So much so that when they start seeing your offer, they'll immediately get drawn to it and acknowledge to themselves that they needed your help. How cool would that be? So how do you get to the bottom of your target market's challenges and problems? Here are some ways you can do to get the information you need. First is by interviewing your ideal market. And you're probably thinking, like, how am I going to do that, Mai? Well, it's really very simple. Look at all the people interacting with you and ask for a short interview. Talk about their problems, challenges, and pay attention to what they're saying. Often, they'd open up better if you're in a conversation with them. They will feel special and taken care of because you cared enough to spend some time with them. Engaging with your audience is one way to build trust and interviewing them to understand their situation better is like icing on the cake. So spend some time with them to get to know them better and ask as many questions as you can. You can do this via chat or Zoom calls or even phone calls. Whatever method works with both of you is great. Another way to get more information from your target market is by using the good old survey. If you have an existing audience and people who are following you, start with them. Create a survey and ask them a series of questions until you get to the bottom of why they're experiencing that kind of problem and having that level of challenges and frustrations. Some of the best practices when doing a survey is making it quick. Your prospects will not have 30 minutes to answer your questions, but they will probably give you one or two minutes if they know you're ready to help them. Make it short and concise and direct to the point. You can use platforms like Google Forms, Typeform, and SurveyMonkey to do it. These platforms are great because they gather the information and you can create a database of responses very easily. Another way to get information from your target market is through social media polls. These days, Instagram and Facebook have made it easier for us to get more information from our audience using the poll feature. On Instagram, you can do this via stories and on Facebook by simply creating a post and selecting the poll feature. I've used these a lot of times and they're very efficient, but unlike Google Forms, Typeform, and SurveyMonkey, they are not automated. And while it may be very effective, you're going to have to manually input the responses or let a social media manager or VA to do it for you, especially if you're expecting hundreds or thousands of responses. In order to get better results on social media, you have to be active in the platform you intend to post your poll in. Otherwise, you might not get the ideal results. Another way to get more information from your target market is by watching your competitors' posts. Yes, your competitors. Most of your competitors will have similar audience with you, and that means their audience will have similar problems and pain points as your target audience. So look deeper into their comments, their responses, and look at what they're saying. What are they complaining about? What are they asking? Pay close attention to the most significant problems they are often talking about. What I typically want to look for are the patterns, like how emotional are they when talking about their problems and challenges and pain points, and what are their motivations why they want their problems solved fast. So instead of just reading their posts and responses, I like to copy those responses in a spreadsheet so I can look at them again and again. These help me understand what types of conversations are already going in their heads and what kinds of solutions are they looking for. One of the biggest mistakes I see most coaches do is creating a coaching package that they think people will buy because of their accreditations, their media coverage, their accomplishments. And while they're all good, 
it isn't good enough for your target market. They will not care about your accreditations, your media coverage, or your accomplishments. But what they will care most about is what's in it for them and how it's going to make their lives better. So next time you create an offer, be sure not to leave your target market out of the picture. Remember, your offer is about them and for them, not for you. And now that you know the first step to creating a high ticket offer, let's move on to the next one, which is your solutions. You already know their problem, so now it's time to help them solve it. But before you do that, there's one more thing you need to know first. You cannot help everyone solve all of their problems. This is why we did step one, which is identifying your target market's problems, challenges, and pain points. But that doesn't mean you have to solve all of them. Because if you try and solve every problem you see out there, you'll just become a generalist and no one likes a generalist. People pay premium for a specialist, those who know exactly what they're doing, specializes in one thing and gets them the result they want. And this is where your expertise, skills, and knowledge will come into play. You have to identify problems that you know you can solve and not something you saw from someone else. This is what will differentiate you from many coaches out there. Your expertise are your solution. So I would recommend you focus on the top three problems max because if you go beyond that, it can get overwhelming. And to identify the major problems you need to help your audience with, you have to pay attention to two things, urgency and severity. These two things will make someone buy anything you have as long as you address a problem that needs immediate solution because it's so pervasive that the problem is affecting their lives already. So gather all of the problems that you have acquired from step one and study them closer. Look for statistical patterns, which ones appear a lot of times and have been mentioned by so many people. These will help you identify the demand for your solution. Then look for emotional patterns. How is this affecting their lives and their businesses? Often people don't talk about emotional effects of problems in social media, but the words they say on their comments can reveal a lot. Words like, I've tried this for two years and still nothing, or I'm tired of it, or I don't think I'm good at this. These will help you identify the urgency and severity of the problem. When there's a problem that's affecting someone else's business and even their lives, and you offer them a solution to take away that problem fast, people would pay premium to get it done right away. For example, one of the things I help my clients solve is sales because that's where I excel at. I have a record of converting 80 to 85% of clients who goes to my sales calls. But I don't try to solve my clients' social media problems because that is not my zone of genius. So in order to create a better solution for your ideal clients, you have to focus on problems that you can solve using your expertise. And then start creating solutions as to how you will solve those problems. And speaking of solutions, if you're looking to get more high-paying clients for your high-ticket offers, I have a training that you can watch for free where I'm sharing all the steps I did to sell my 5K, 10K, and even 30K offers with ease. Plus, you'll get to learn my secret method to establish a no like, and trust factor fast using chats and close sales better than you've done before. You can find the link to that in the description below. So, now you have identified their problems and pain points and have created the solution. It's time for the most exciting step of creating your high ticket offer, which is your pricing. How do you really get to the bottom of your pricing strategy, especially when it comes to high ticket offer? Before we get deeper into this pricing exercise, I want you to know that there's no one size fits all approach when it comes to pricing. And I wish there's a magic formula for me to share, but that's not how it worked for me. And I don't share stuff I didn't personally do or have no experience about. So what you're going to get in this step is something that has worked for me and my clients. Try it for yourself and see how it will do for you too. Number one, don't overthink your rates. My best advice, pick a number first and start with that. A high ticket for me should start at 5k while for others it can be 3k and that's okay. And yes, at first it might sound dumb because I just picked a number out of thin air but setting the rate is not the idea here yet. The idea is to simply just pick a number to start with and then from then on, move on to the next step. And that next step is to identify your monthly income goal. So let's say you want to make 20K a month and you have a $5,000 offer. That means you need to close four clients every month. If you try to lower your rate, that means you're going to have to close more clients, correct? But if you increase your rates to let's say $10,000, that means you're only going to need two clients a month. So this gives you an idea that with higher rates, you'll need less clients, which also means less work. And with lower rates, you'll need more clients. And with more clients, there will be more work as well. With this in mind, 
Pick the option that works better for you. When you have identified your goals and how many clients you need to get every month, proceed to the next step, which is evaluating your offer's value. You have identified your target market and their problems and pain points, and you've designed a solution to help them. And the one important thing you need to remember is that the value of your offer is dictated by your market, not you. So your price, no matter how high or low, will be acceptable for the clients who understands the value you bring for them. Which means your price now is not going to be forever. You may start at 2K rate or 5K now and you can gradually increase your price as the demand for your offer increase. Don't make the mistake of comparing your prices with other coaches or business owners for any reason at all. Stay in your own lane and focus in your own game. That's how you will win and that's how your clients win. Overall, a high ticket offer is great, especially if you're starting a coaching business because you don't need a huge following and many clients to get started and you'll still get to generate way better income. Contrary to what most people believe, you don't need to start selling a low tier offer when you're starting a business. Another great option, it's probably not going to be profitable for for you while you're in the process of building a business, growing your audience, and of course, paying your bills. This is why I love high ticket offers. Aside from the fact that it can help you generate the income you need fast, it's also a great way to establish your authority and build credibility faster than being in social media for years. And now that you know the steps to create one, tell me in the comments below. What starting price will you set your high ticket offer? I'd love to know how you're going to achieve your income goals this month, so let's chat below. And once you have created your high ticket offer, you're probably going to want to learn how to sell it, right? So be sure to click and watch the next video. It's so good, you don't want to miss it. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.